Okay, female reproductive hormone regulation. So still HPG axis, but we also have to focus on what happens at the uterus. We still see GnRH, okay? GnRH is the hypothalamic hormone, which targets the anterior pituitary, causes the release of FSH and LH, but it's not that this doesn't exist over here, it's just that the regulation is more between the gonad and the pituitary in the female, so we're, gonna, we're not gonna ignore that that exists, we're just gonna pay attention more from pituitary on. Specific target, FSH targets the granulosa of the follicle. And as it does, that leads to follicle maturation and this is where you know we have a we have the talk in class follicle maturation goes hand in hand with estrogen production so the granulosa when they're stimulated by fsh produce estrogen what does it mean to be a mature follicle and we looked at the oo site and it doesn't really change so what it means for to mature in the follicle is that we get more and more granulosa and picture as that follicle matures, that means that as there's more and more granulosa, there's more and more estrogen. Estrogen, get a different color here, has many targets. Remember like androgens in the male, it's a growth, it's the reproductive growth hormone, targets the whole body, but in specific, target within the uterus. Nope, not coming out very good in that color, so I'll stick with the Black. So target is the endometrium. Uh, and what we see is that estrogen's effect is that it increases cell division. So during the phase where there's a lot of estrogen, we see an increase in cell division and an increase in the size of the endometrium. Estrogen also is important for, I'm going to put this down here, supporting the spiral arteries. So spiral arteries provide the blood to the endometrium. So estrogen plays an important role in that. LH targets the fecal cells. And as a result, we see the fecal cells produce progestin. Uh, as we talked about the maturing follicle, remember fecal cells don't show up until the follicle is almost mature. So we don't see the effect of progestin until late in that initial pre-ovulatory phase. Uh, in terms of regulation, real quick, before we kind of, there's a couple more arrows we need to draw in here, I know. Estrogen, kind of very directly, has a negative feedback with FSH. Progestin, very directly, has a negative feedback on LH production. So picture we could go in order as FSH goes up, estrogen goes up, as estrogen goes up, FSH goes down. Same with LH, LH goes up, stimulates the theca, progestin goes up, as progestin goes up, it feeds back to LH production and LH production shuts down. Um, the one regulatory interaction is that there is positive feedback between estrogen and LH. Positive feedback means as estrogen goes up, um, LH should go up, but we don't actually see that relationship until close to ovulation. And that's because this positive feedback doesn't exist until there's a set point. So what we see, we'll draw a little side arrow here, is that a mature follicle, I'm just gonna abbreviate that, mature fall, means what? It means that there's a lot of granulosa. So the most granulosa, so that equals lots of granulosa, which means there's a lot of estrogen. If there's a lot of estrogen, we get to the set point for this positive feedback relationship and at that set point, we would see the LH surge. The LH surge 
is that positive feedback relationship, which leads to da, 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 ovulation. In that order. Post ovulation, high levels of progestin. Um, what we would see is that the granulosa and theca collapse on themselves and form the corpus luteum. And what we see during this phase is we, so we don't see, we still see because there's estrogen cell division, but what we see is an increase in capillary content and we see an increase uh, at the same time in glands and gland activity. Also, progestin supports the spiral arteries. So at the end of the menstrual cycle, as estrogen and progestin drops, we lose support for the spiral arteries and that's what's gonna to lead to the resetting of the menstrual cycle and we're back at the beginning and that's where we see menstruation.